Hey guys, we're back. Uh, getting back to the barn a little bit. Um, you can't tell it's cold out here still. Just got this burner going, this waste oil burner I have. And uh, I'm curious about that. I do have a video on my channel about it when I built it. But anyhow, getting back, I've got to make some more pegs. I'm about out. I don't have enough to, to peg the next vent I stand up. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing that in a week or two. Looks like it's going to warm up for next weekend. So hopefully... We can, uh, I can show you guys how I'm standing, uh, show you guys how I'm standing that barn completely by myself. So it's fun to watch, I, I think. I haven't watched myself, but anyhow. So, your peg selection, how you do your pegs, the sizes of them, the species of wood you use, is just as important as any other aspect of the joinery design for strength and structural integrity. Um, I'll try to find the tables for the shear strength on these pegs, um, but I'm using white ash. It's a good straight green wood, and that's what you want. It's a very strong wood. So my pegs I'm doing are one inch. The rule of thumb is your peg diameter needs to be half of your tenon thickness. I'm doing a little different, but I'm also putting uh, one extra peg in each tie beam joint where it goes into the wall plate so because those tenons on those are two and a half inches thick but say you're doing a two inch thick tenon standard rule of thumb would be a one inch peg so and we'll get into where you lay the pegs out when I go to stand them when I go to put the next bed together so anyhow there's a few different ways of making your pegs you can uh, put them on a shaving horse and ride them by hand with a draw knife I've seen people uh, make holes in a uh, quarter inch steel plate and just pound their peg blanks through. It, it, that doesn't work too bad really, believe it or not, from what I've watched. I haven't tried it myself to, to really tell you. I have tried ride, riding some by hand and that's fine. It just takes a long time. I'm going for efficiency because there's so much other stuff to do. I would like to get these done as quickly as possible. So. I'm going with an octagon peg. Uh, the benefits of an octagon peg is it is a lot easier to drag these through than a round peg. And I think you have less chance of splitting a tenon with one of these than with a round peg that maybe you didn't get completely round. And these also, because of the sharper edges on them, they bite in really well into your, uh, into your joinery. So they're not going anywhere. But, like I said, they're one inch pegs. I've got a flat that I split out of uh, some ash firewood last year. That's the other thing, you want your peg stock good and dry. So, I split these about a year and a half ago. And they should be plenty dry because I don't want these pegs shrinking up and getting loose in there. And the other thing that we're going to do when we're all said and done is I just, uh, and I've got to get the pot on there, but I usually keep a pot of wax on the uh, shop stove in here in the wintertime. So when I go to make the, when I'm done making these pegs, I'll get like 50 or 60 of them. And then I'll just dunk each end into a pot of wax, you know, just an inch or two. And that seals up the end grains and keeps them from drying out more. And also helps to keep them from cracking. So, because remember, wood dries out fastest on the end grains. But anyhow, start the table saw up and uh, get going on it. cut what I'm going for, trying to get a good flat, trying to get a good 90 degree there. Uh, kind of tough when you get into some of these, and probably uh, I might have enough meat on that to do what I got to do. That's that's going to be sketchy though on that one. So, but uh, now I'm going to set this thing to one inch, get this down to one inch, and go from there.
we've got four of them there, and all we have to do is put a point on them. Point's kind of important. You don't put the peg or you don't put the point on them. You're going to have a hell of a time trying to bang those through all those joints. That's common sense, and I probably don't even need to include that. But there's always one person out there, you know. This isn't what I normally use, but it's sitting here handy. Points don't have to be perfect, perfect guys. You just got to get them so they drive into the holes. There we go guys, it took what, 10-15 minutes, and once you, if you got a bunch of them you're doing all at once, which I will be later today, um, it goes a lot quicker because you just get a stockpile and you set the saw up once for each, each cut, you can rip them off real quick that way, that's why I do it this way, so anyhow, if you guys haven't done so, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, uh, if you do subscribe, want to be notified when the new videos come out um, you will need to click the uh, bell next to the notification or next to your subscribe that'll get you to your notifications then you can set it up to be notified whenever uh, a new video comes out so anyhow and to all the uh, all the new subscribers out there the last few days I really appreciate uh, really appreciate it guys um, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy watching these as much as I enjoy making them. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the, uh, the barn project, I have five other videos before this one. Uh, if you go to my uh, channel page, you should be able to find them all right. Um, I also have them posted on my website. Um, and I'll list the, uh, I'll put the link to the website below in the description. So you guys have a good day and thank you for watching.